This video corresponds to chapter 10 of the of this book and here are the subjects that I'm going to discuss in this video. I'm going to create a stress plots with a, a pure shear situation. Just, I'm going to just create shear forces and then I'm going to check the results with for me a circle and SOLIDWORKS simulation. So here I've got a couple of images of the situation that I'm going to create. I'm going to create a part of 10 millimeters wide and one millimeter thickness and because the force is 5 newton it's going to be 5 divided by 10 is half a newton per square millimeter is going to be the result and this is the more circle that I'm expecting and I can uh, verify that with help of SOLIDWORKS simulation so I'm going to switch to SOLIDWORKS and create a new file with a template that I've set up as shown in the video of chapter 1 so I'm going to delete this cylinder because I don't need it for this video but the coordinate system is convenient over here so I'm going to create a, a rectangle with a, a width of 10 millimeters and then the height should be the same so this these two lines should be equal then I'm going to extrude it for one millimeter and create the situation as shown in the images so I'm going to delete this study and create a new one like that then I'm gonna fix this part uh, I'm gonna fix it in this point but it can still rotate so this point is now fixed but it can still rotate and to prevent that from rotating while uh, not causing stress concentrations I should use a reference geometry restraint on this point with this surface as a reference and then restrain these two directions from moving so you can see on the green arrows in which direction the part now cannot move anymore so th what you can see is this part can still rotate around the y direction because these restraints don't prevent rotation so to completely stop this part from rotating I only need one more reference geometry in this direction I don't want this point to move and like this the point the part is completely restrained but won't have stress concentrations so now I'm gonna enter the forces on this area in this direction I want 5 newtons and then I should do that for all four surfaces so this surface in this direction 5 newton reverse two more surfaces to go and then the last one this should be pointing downwards so also 5 newton so you can see the four forces over here I'll save the part and then I can run it then I'm getting the von Mises stress I don't want to look at that right now I'm gonna define a new stress plot and when I check with the Excel file I should have the tau XZ or ZX but there's only one you can plot in SOLIDWORKS simulation because they're equal so in this case I need tau XZ so it's over here that's what I want to plot and that should be half which I can see right now here on the scale as well the shear stress in the XZ direction is half a new newton per square millimeter and you can see small uh, small small areas of stress concentrations very small is because of the scale is so closely uh, linked to together so the stress is uniformly half a newton per square millimeter and the reason why that is is that I prevented uh, stress concentration by restraining the part in the way that I have restrained it in so now I'm gonna check what the normal stress is on on a surface of 35 or oh sorry 45 degrees rotation so for that I'm gonna create a new reference area playing through three points so this one that one and that one I hope 
the last click was wrong so this last point now I've got a surface under uh, an angle of 45 degrees and on this surface there should be a normal force which is caused by the the shear and you can see it already in the more circle so I've created this point on the circle in the orientation of XYZ and under 45 degrees rotation there should be half a newton per square millimeter of normal stress and I can check that so I'm gonna find a stress plot of a stress in X direction which should be zero if I don't have this plane as a reference so the stress in the X direction is zero you can see it here very very small numbers which can be ignored it's uh, in the magnitude order of magnitude of a thousand so if I then change this stress then it should be half a newton per square millimeter if I use this surface over here as a reference this surface now it should be half the the stress in the x-direction and I can see it already as well so the stress under 45 degrees in this situation is half a newton per square millimeter and you can see it over here as well so in this direction the shear should be zero the shear tau xz with this plane as a reference should be zero you can see it in the more circle and you can also verify that with help of software simulation so that was the discussion of chapter 10 of the book on shear stress and the corresponding more circle thanks for watching